In this episode of How to Tableau, I'm gonna show you how to create automated KPIs, something that we always wanna talk about. Um, I actually think it's really useful because uh, we always wanna automate things. We don't wanna to have to redo them every month and like change a filter to say, all right, let's choose the next month. We just wanna like the next one, the data rolls in, let's just update it. Uh, let's, let's just jump in. So here we are, we're inside of Superstore Dataset. It's got daily sales, we're reporting at the monthly level, and I wanna automate that so when the month ends, my last month uh, data automatically rolls in. So if we're, uh, and we're gonna pretend today is uh, February 21st, 2019, we're well past that. But when this month ends, when February ends, I wanna be able to report out February, very easily. So uh, if I'm just pretending the day is moving along and you can follow it in the top right corner here, and the month changes and the values change automatically. I don't need to go in and change a filter or a parameter. It automatically does it for me. I'm going to pause in the middle of this video so that I can show you what I'm doing. I created this parameter that's called pretend today is. And this parameter is just dates uh, in which I've loaded in every possible date value from the Superstore dataset. Any of those dates, uh, specifically from order date, I've just loaded in as a list of values. And we're gonna pretend those dates are whatever this value is. And I actually then built a calculation called date TF. And I'll show you, it's just the order date is uh, less than or equal to that pretend date is. And I ended up putting on filters and I hit true and okay. And I added this to context. When I do all of these things, it helps us simulate or pretend what the data would look like in this situation uh, if it were this data, or sorry, if it was this date. Uh, it's, it, it's just a really nice, simple way to practice to see what things are gonna turn out like as you go forward. Let's just hop back into the video. And you can follow it in the top right corner here. And the month changes and the values change automatically. I don't need to go in and change a filter or a parameter. It automatically does it for me. And to do that, we need to really master our dates. And I'm gonna go to a separate sheet here now. Um, and it's, this is just a sheet of all the dates in my data set. And I'm going to be able to highlight the month that I want from that. There's really two sets of months that I'll ultimately want, but first, let's just get the most recent full month. To do that, we're gonna build a calculated field. I'm just gonna call it most recent full month. And inside that calculation, we're just gonna say, the order date has to be greater than or equal to some value. And that value is actually gonna start uh, with saying the max order date. So uh, that's not actually what the value we're gonna pull out here, but we're gonna use this max order date uh, level of detail calculation, which is giving me the max date uh, in our data set. And since we're pretending that today is 3 to 2019, if I did just change this back to the 21st, um, it's gonna return February 21st. Of course, I don't want to return February 21st. I want the first of the month. So I'm just going to type date trunk in front of it. Then I'm going to say month with a comma. And this would return February 1st. Of course, that's not a full month. We're on the 21st. How are we going to get back exactly one more month? Well, we'll wrap this date trunk in the date add function. And the date add, we're gonna specify month. So let's go into month and we're gonna type in minus one, which is actually means go back one month and we'll add a parenthesis at the back. So what this now says is give me any order date that's greater than or equal to uh, January 1st, 2019. Uh, we just then need to add the, the, the part that says, let's stop that date from going forward. So we're gonna say, and order date is less than and just like last time, oh, we really just need to copy this part right in here, which is date trunk. 
And I missed the D, but if I type that out, this is, that day trunk is giving me the start of the previous, uh, the, of February. So if it's less than the February 1st, but it's greater than or equal to January 1st, that is the most recent full month. And I'll hit OK. And if we just bring this calculation out onto color, you'll see it's got the most recent full month highlighted here. And if I continue to do, just add days to my data set, you'll notice it's slowly growing, and then it pops up into the next month. So it's doing exactly what we were hoping to see, but I'll just bring my date back to the 21st. All right, we've got that. We've got the current time period. I actually, if you look at my KPI, I'm also gonna show you how to add in a comparison time period. So versus LY uh, or versus last year, I wanna be able to show you how to do that. Um, if we had a filter on our view, we wouldn't be able to show that, uh, but based on how we'll build this calculation, that's how we'll get it to work. So we're just gonna create a new calculated field and we're gonna, um, uh, I lied. We are not gonna create a new calculated field. We're gonna go find most recent full month and we're gonna duplicate that and we're gonna edit it. What I wanna do is get the previous time period from last year. And all I'm gonna do is change negative one to 13, and I'm gonna add a date, add month, negative 12 in um, the bottom part of this calculation. And I've got an error, I added an X in there on accident. Um, and then I'm just gonna put dash LY. So this is for last year. So we have the most recent full month and then that time, same time period last year. It allows us to make the comparisons that we wanna make. So great, we've got these two calculations. And if I just bring this out here onto color as well, um, let me bring both out. You can see now we've got both the current full period and the prior year. We're gonna build some comparisons with that. So there we have it, uh, two date calculations that are gonna be very useful for us for building these KPIs. So let's build this sales KPI together. I'm just gonna start with a new sheet. I'm just gonna bring that date TF calculation back out onto my view and I'm gonna hit okay. This uh, also don't forget to add it to context. And from there, uh, we can build out our KPI. You can build out as many KPIs as you want. As you do this, how you create multiple KPIs is you just double click on columns, type out min 0, 0.0. And then what I end up doing is click and dragging and duplicating these values over multiple times. So if I wanted five KPIs, 10 KPIs, I'm just dragging that value out as many as I need to in order to build my KPI. But I'm just gonna use this first mark. I'm just going to click on it. And when I click on it, it allows me to activate that particular sheet. And we're going to build five calculations to build our KPI. The first calculation is just for the most recent month. I'm going to just say sales recent month. So that's going to give me the most recent full month. I'm just going to say sum. And inside the sum, I'm going to say if most recent full month, then return the sales, end. And that's this calculation. Really straightforward, just putting if statement and summing up that data. That's gonna get me my sales for the most recent month. Uh, for my next calculation, uh, let's just take recent month. First of all, let's go find that calculation. I'm just gonna add it on label and you'll notice, uh, well, first of all, it's not showing up. I'm just gonna change standard to entire view and then I'm gonna change my mark type to text. There we go. That is the most recent month of data. We can cross check that with my KPIs. Certainly uh, $43,971. Now let's build out that percentage value that you're gonna see underneath it. We're gonna create a second KPI, or uh, sorry, a second calculation here. And it's gonna be for the, the the, the same time last year. So I'm just gonna type out same time last year. And for this calculation, I'm gonna say sum. And if most recent month last year, 
then uh, we want sales and end, and that is our second calculation. From there, we're gonna build a third calculation because we're gonna find the difference of those, the percent difference of those two. So we're gonna say uh, sales recent month minus sales same time last year. I'm gonna put those in parentheses together and then I'm gonna say same time last year and divide it. This is gonna be my sales. Um, I'm just gonna call it percent change. And I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna take my percent change calculation and I'm also gonna put that on text. And it looks like it's oh, 1.3, uh, seven is a ratio, but that's a percentage. So let's change this to a more reasonable number to look at. I'm just going to right click like, and I'm going to go down to uh, number format and we're going to change the formatting to a percentage. And I'm going to get rid of all the decimal places. We really don't need to see all the extra ones. Uh, and then under, I'm going to also click on custom. And what I want to do is I'm going to change the formatting by adding a semicolon and then typing out 0% uh, as well. What this is going to do is remove the negative sign in front of the percentage. So we're going to let the, the up and down arrow that we create with the color dictate how we interpret the value and the direction of it. We just want to show the values regardless. So I'm going to hit OK, and that changes it to 237% percent change. So we're up on 37%. That's really good for business. Uh, we're also going to turn off our tooltips. Um, and we can't really do that in this case. So we're just going to click on tooltip and delete it. Finally, we got two more calculations to create. All right, so we're going to create that up arrow next. And we're just going to go create calculated field. And we're going to say if that, um, what do we call this? Um, not a percent change. If sales percent change is greater than zero, then let's show inside quotes the up arrow. Uh, where you can get your favorite up arrow, it's an ASCII sign. You can go to your favorite site, go memorize it. I use alt-codes.net, and then I'm just gonna hit, uh, first of all, sales percent change. Uh, this is going up and I'll hit OK and we have that calculation and we're going to bring it out on our view, hit OK and you'll see we've got an up arrow. Let's make a down arrow too for this same calculation. I'm just going to again go find percent change. I'm going to duplicate it because it's going to be way easier. Edit it and then for the percent down calculation, uh, we're just going to show a down arrow. Actually, we could just say less than. We don't need or equal to because then it's not down, it's the same. Uh, hit OK and bring this out onto our view. Nothing showed up. That's because we can either be up or down. We can't be both based on how we built this calculation, but we know when the month ends, uh, it could change to a different direction, so we need to be ready for it. I'm just going to click on text and then we're going to edit that text by clicking the three dots we're going to get rid of everything because we're going to just start from scratch and i often put my label for whatever my kpi is right in this text box so i'm going to start by changing my font to size 12 and typing out sales and you know what i'm going to actually just change this maybe size 10 even smaller and on the next line i actually like to change the font size to be a lot bigger and bold and what we want to put in there is our actual KPI, so most recent month. And that's really going to pop because the number is what's the most important thing. And then on the next line, back down to size 10 uh, for regular so font. And then for a regular font, uh, size 10. And then we're also going to change the color to light gray. You're just going to type last year ly colon with a space and then we're going to insert the up and the down arrows and then we're going to also insert the change but what we're going to do here is we're just going to highlight the up 
and we're going to change the color. I'm going to select blue. You can choose green or whatever color you want. And then the change down arrow uh, is not good. So we're going to change that to red. And there you have it. That is how I build out my KPIs. I'll hit OK. And there you have it, a KPI. And now if we just change the date in here to after the month ends, you'll see the down arrow now comes into play. Of course, we just need to format. And then the last part would just to be building out my KPIs where I currently have placeholders. So this is just the first of my KPIs. Again, you'd want to create more, but you can see my KPI is now automated. I'm near the end of the month, not quite done. Uh, I'm reporting numbers as is, um, but when I switch months, boom, I've got new values being reported. And that's how I build my monthly automated KPIs. So there you have it. Uh, we've got uh, what was really seven calculations, two to set up the date, the automating of dates, and then five to automate those uh, KPIs for us. Uh, so seven calculations in total to build automated uh, KPIs. And if you think about it, like seven calculations, not that bad when you think that you're going to have a lot less work on your hands when it's all said and done. So thanks again for tuning in. If you have any ideas for longer videos for how to Tableau, uh, please add them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, uh, be sure to like it and, and also subscribe because you know what, why not just have this show up in your inbox when uh, the videos are up and new. Uh, so thanks a lot. Uh, looking forward to the next video. Boom, boom, done.